Hey, good morning, uh, maybe now afternoon to everyone in one of my online classes for the semester. I want to put up a brief introductory video so you get a little sense of who I am, uh, what the expectations of uh, uh, the course will be, and, and how to navigate through it. Online learning is a, a bit of a challenge. Those of you that never done it before, I, I can assure you that it's not the most um, um, comfortable way to learning. So between you and your classmates, certainly between me and you, because it's distance education. We're just not going to have the same kind of rapport and uh, give and take that we would have in a traditional classroom. So I like to at least put a face to a name for you, for your on your end. Hey, Jim Corman's my instructor. What's he all about? Who is he? A little bit of sense of, of, of who I am. Uh, I live in Brimfield, Massachusetts. Uh, I've been down in southern Worcester County, Brimfield, Surbridge area uh, for much of my life, but I did grow up in Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, uh, I have my wife and seven kids, aging, ranging in ages from 18 to uh, 28. Uh, two cats and two dogs. A lot of people always want to know who the dogs are. For some reason, one's sitting right next to me right down here. That's Bailey. Uh, Bailey, can you look up? That's the golden doodle. I have Martha's behind me too, somewhere over here. She's hiding behind the post. And um, we live down here in Brimfield. I, I, I love teaching at the Mount. I've been, again, at the Mount for 23 years as the department chair for legal studies, political science, and history. My background is uh, as a community college graduate myself, I went to Springfield Technical Community College, got an associate's degree, uh, then went on to Springfield College. Um, right down the street from Springfield Technical Community College. And then I went to law school and got my Juris Doctorate also in Springfield, the Western Illinois College. I, I'm one of the few students who didn't want to leave home and wanted to stay with his parents. I liked it there. Uh, later, I went on and got a, a master's degree in history to specialize in um, really constitutional history because it was something that was very much interested in. I wanted to have the credentials related to that to teach more in that area as well. Um, so what about, what do you care? Well, maybe now you have a face to a name and you get a little bit about my background and, and a sense of what my expectations are, would be nice to know. So everything should be pretty well organized when you get on Blackboard. You're gonna go in there, you're gonna see this video. You're gonna see the syllabus. The syllabus is, I think, fairly clear. I don't get real strict on dates all the time. Uh, sometimes I give you more weekly themes of how we want to proceed. Um, but there usually is some indication of when assignments need to be done, how to submit them, when quizzes are due, and how to get those done, and whether or not you have an obligation to put something up on the discussion board, or if there's a small research and writing project. I think I spell out everything fairly clearly, but the importance of why I put this video up is I know sometimes things just get lost in translation. You're going to say, I don't really know what he really wants on this assignment, or I don't know how to find the assignment, or he says there's a quiz due by such and such a date, but I can't find it. It might be an error on my end. I might simply have yet to post the quiz, or I simply forgotten to post the quiz, or I want you to read an article and write a short commentary on your thoughts about the article, and you can't find it anywhere. It's maybe because I didn't post it, but maybe I did and you just simply can't find it. I want you to feel comfortable reaching out with any questions or concerns you have during the course semester. And I genuinely mean that. There's no such thing as a stupid question, especially in distance learning, where I don't want you to stick your head in the sand and say, I, I just don't get what this guy wants or how to do it. Uh, I'm not smart enough. I don't get it. it. That's the furthest from the truth. It's just something about the navigation of doing distance learning that can sometimes be a challenge. And sometimes it really is an error on my end. Sometimes you'll see a date. You'll say, hey, that date's from a different semester. It's because I didn't update a previous assignment that I still wanted to use, but for some reason Blackboard captured an old date and it might be freaking you out. Don't be afraid to contact me and say, these dates don't jive with what this semester's um, calendar looks like. Uh, is it me or is it you? Let's let's figure it out. So don't ever be afraid to reach out with any questions or concerns or an assignment. Say you took a quiz or an assignment and you didn't do that well on it. Let's have a dialogue and talk about what the strengths and weaknesses are about your approach so we can get better. It's not about where you're at now. It's about where you're going to end up at the end of the semester and hopefully gain some confidence and understanding of the topic you, you, you might be currently studying with me. Um, the... Uh, I'm very informal. I, most people call me Corman for some reason. I don't know why. It's not Professor Corman or Attorney Corman. It's just Corman. I, I have no objection to calling me Corman or Jim or, or Professor Corman, whatever you want. I'm very informal. Don't be afraid to reach out and uh, 
call me. I tend not to answer the phone in the first instance. I have a phobia about talking to people on the phone. I just submit my, one of my idiosyncrasies right off the bat. Doesn't mean I won't call you back once I'm prepared to do so. Don't be afraid to call at any time. I'll get back to you within 24 hours. And emails I usually get back within 24 hours as well too. If I don't get back to you, it means because I just become absent-minded about the issue you have that I might realize in my mind is very simple and I can resolve it. But to you, it's very important and I haven't gotten back to you. Follow up. Don't be afraid to contact me multiple times until it gets addressed. I want you to do that because it could be a shortcoming on my end that I simply missed the message or I saw the message and I didn't think it was a big deal and I'm going to remedy it, but you don't know I'm going to do that. So don't be afraid to reach out a second time. I put my office number for the mount up there, but I also put my cell phone, which is a business number. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out either. If you do email me or text me, make sure when you do email me, you tell me which class you're in and what your name is, because I do have a significant amount of online class offerings with multiple students in each one. They're, they're filled to the brim. And if I just say, hey, I don't know what's going on at this quiz. I can't find it. I'm going to say, well, who are you? And I might be able to figure it out from your email address, but not always because sometimes students contact me in their private email. But secondly, it takes a fair amount of investigative work to figure who you are up who you are in terms of your name, but which class you're in so I can go look and see if there's a quiz problem in terms of accessing or maybe a quiz that you got shut out on and you're asking me to re, um, reset it, which I, I usually do if there's a reasonable explanation, your power went out, you lost connection in the middle of a quiz and it won't let you back in, I'll reset it. We can be flexible, but you got to let me know who you are, which class you're in so I can address the problem without having to do a bunch of emails back and forth. Um, I, I like to think I'm very approachable. I want to help you succeed and get through the process. Some of you have me before. You already know who I am and how I'm informal and, and really want you to reach out and contact me with questions or issues as we go forward. Although some of the assignments and obligations do have deadlines, I do recognize that um, many of you have kids and work and other obligations. You have physical health, mental health issues that might challenge you during the course of the semester. If problems come up, I will gladly work with you, but you have to contact me to let me know there are issues and we can arrange some alternative deadlines if that's appropriate, as long as we can still keep pace with the semester overall. Um, uh, other than that, I, 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 I think it's just a real brief intro. I, I do want to mention this, a couple of things. One is, I, I know what it's like to be a community college student. I was one for four years. Uh, how can you be one for four years? It's a two-year program. It's because the first year was an absolute failure for me because, well, one is I didn't feel like I was college material. I graduated high school. I thought I was going to be a plumber. My father was a plumber. My grandfather was a plumber. So I thought I'd enter that um, field. I was interested in that. And uh, I had a tough time getting in the apprentice union. They only took so many apprentice each year in that first year when I was just out of high school, there wasn't any available slots for me. So my dad told me, hey, why don't you go over to community college, take some college, it wouldn't hurt. Um, because I didn't apply to any other college, not thinking I was going to college. I didn't think of myself as an academic. So I went up to Springfield Technical Community College, growing up in Springfield, went down there, signed up for classes the day before school started, put them all on Tuesdays and Thursdays, all five of them. And I felt very alone, I felt very disconnected, and I felt the classes I was taking had no relationship to what my career would be. I was taking things like sociology, anthropology, I think psychology, uh, math, which was related, was probably the one class that was related, and I think English comp. Um, and boy, did I feel lost. I didn't feel like I really belonged. And uh, this is before we had email and, and, and communication ability like we do now. Uh, but I'm also shy by nature, so I didn't want to uh, approach professors when I was anxious about an assignment or how to approach uh, studying in a class and all that kind of stuff. So I felt very alienated throughout the process. And my buddies, not that I have a ton of friends, but the friends I do have weren't going to community college with me. So I felt very alone. And because it's a community college, you tend to go to classes and you leave, and it's hard to build community. Um, and I, I, I felt very lost and very unhappy while I was there in that first semester. And about three quarters of the way through, papers were starting to come due and, and there were some quizzes done being done. And I was doing pretty well, actually, overall. I was, I was doing B, some A work, I guess. But then I kind of bombed one quiz in a class. I distinctly remember a whole section of it. I didn't understand the material. I don't remember going over it or anything. And the professor at the end of class said, hey, if anybody has any questions in class, we'll save 10 or 15 minutes. Come on up. We'll talk about it. 
So I got up the gumption of nerves to go and talk to this professor about what I got wrong. I said, I just didn't remember seeing any of this in the reading or in the lectures in class. I hadn't missed one class as of that point. It was getting close to Thanksgiving break. And the professor goes, oh, that came from the suggested readings, these uh, other uh, pamphlets and, and books you could get as part of the recommendations the faculty had. And I said, well, I didn't know. I thought those were recommended but not required. And I always remember she tried to make a joke, but I took it very offensively. She said, well, the next time a professor makes a recommendation for you, perhaps you should heed it. And students that were gathered around kind of laughed and she laughed and I laughed p politely, but I was quite honest with you, deeply offended. And I thought, oh, I got like a 72 on the test. But to me, that was, I thought it was a bad grade and I felt terrible. When I went to my sociology class, a class that I actually liked quite a bit, great professor, really liked him, but he was kind of vague about deadlines and due dates. And he wanted us to do a paper, a research paper on, on our own accord, something we were interested in related to the topics within the sociology class. And I'm like, well, what am I doing on? I didn't like that degree of flexibility and independence. And I was very much intimidated about that paper. So I remember he was saying, don't forget, next week your rough drafts are due. And I'm like, I don't even know what a rough draft really is. I didn't get a lot of exposure in high school, to be quite honest with you, when it came to writing skills and outlines and thesis statements and all the things that are important in writing. So I remember leaving college that Thursday. I didn't have classes Friday. didn't have them until the next Tuesday. Feeling pretty low and, and disconnected. And I got the flu. I got very, very sick. And I remember being sick all weekend. And we didn't have email, like I said, but we got snail mail. It's like a traditional mail. And it was a, a letter from Stick reminding me that um, spring semester classes were going to be out soon and you can sign up and they want you to meet with your advisor. But it was also a notice about the last day to withdraw from classes before you get a, a grade or an assessment in some way. And I remember thinking all weekend, being sick with the flu, thinking how disillusioned I was and how much I didn't feel like I was college material and uh, that this wasn't for me. And I remember I could withdraw for Monday uh, and not get any penalty or any grade. I just get a W on my transcript. And I, I have my transcripts upstairs, but I just looked at them the other day. I was going to show them to you to show the Ws in my first year um, at STIC. And um, it doesn't reflect that. It, does, it just it doesn't reflect that semester at all. But anyways, I, I, I did that. I drove down Monday morning in my Galaxy 500 that was all rusty. And I withdrew from class and I felt so good that day. And I said, this is beyond me and outside of me, and I'm not uh, a college material, and I'm going to be a plumber, and thank goodness this little experiment is over with. And then about a week later, I felt terrible about it. I felt very guilty, and I felt a bit um, know, embarrassed, and maybe I felt a bit like a failure for doing it. And sure enough, Thanksgiving break comes around. My buddies that went on to college and other people that just went on to, to work and careers all got together during that Thanksgiving break. That's what we did. Everyone's asking each other how college is going, how their jobs are going. And, and they get to me and say, what's going on with you? And I said, I'm not, I, you know, my closest friends, I told them, you know, I quit school. It wasn't for me. But I found like I was reaching for excuses that uh, didn't sell well with myself. And I felt kind of ashamed that I had quit. Didn't tell my parents until Thanksgiving. And my dad just had that, that sense of was wrong. And I said, yeah, dad, I quit school. I'm going to be a plumber anyways. It wasn't for me. It was all... And he was supportive about it. He wasn't me, but he, I could feel he was disappointed, not in me, but for me, that I should at least finished out the semester. And man, I feel terrible for, for months, really. And I, I got so distraught over it that the next semester, I didn't go back in January, but they had these mini semesters. We have met them out too. They're the seven and a half week sessions that start up in March or something like that. I got another catalog in the mail and I saw some, I said, you know, I'm going to go to night school and take one class just to see if I can do it. Take English comp, English the writing was intimidating to me and I wanted to get better at it. And I took a night class and, and very filled with anxiety and went back and took it, had a good professor every night. I think it was four nights a week. It was because it was a seven and a half week semester. It was a little bit more intensive and I worked my butt off for, I think a B or B plus, but I did learn how to write much better. And that professor really motivated me. And I followed her through the rest of the, the nether, another three years because I took a year of general studies and two years of criminal justice after that. Took every class I could with her because she was very hard, but she was very, very good and very supportive. And at the end, I remember when I was graduating, she asked me if I was going to like all these borderline Ivy League schools like Middlebury or Clark, you know, all these really prestigious schools. I didn't know what they were because I didn't come from a college family. And I, I said, I don't know if I can go there. I don't know if I can go to these different schools. Was, of course you can. You're one of the best students I had. And it just moved me to realize maybe I, I, I could do okay in college. 
But that initial failure, I don't want to tell you that, oh, we overcame all these obstacles. It's not about that. It's about I know the anxiety and the feeling of disconnect sometimes when you're a student. And what I urge you to do is try to find some grit. And if school's not for you, finish out the semester. You're probably going to do better than you think you will or, or could. And secondly, if you do find some place of employment, some other pathway you want to pursue and it's not college, be surprised. In a few years, you might want to come back. And now you've got some of the base credits done. It's never going to hurt you. And sometimes people, because I, I, I teach history and students, well, what is history? I got to take it as a requirement or something like that, or political science. I understand the law students often want to become paralegals or attorneys, so they're a little bit more directed. But why do I have to take those other classes? Any class you take, and including the ones I've taken so many classes over my lifetime, you develop better reading and writing skills almost universally. You get better critical thinking skills, and you do gain some substantive knowledge in areas that are going to overlap in your life. They just will. And I urge you to hang on. And part of being able to hang on is knowing that you have an ally, meaning knowing you have a professor you can reach out to if you're having problems academically. And also the entire college is very good at it. I think all the other faculty support the similar view. They want to help you. So don't be afraid to reach out if you're having troubles academically or if you need some kind of accommodation moving forward. Um, after I got out of STIC, Springfield Technical College, my two-year degree, um, I, I, I did well at all my other institutions. That's the other little thing I always like to talk about because some students feel like, well, I'm at community college. It's really not, it's not, you know, the Cadillac of educational institutions. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. And the reason why I'm saying it, I don't get any more money from this. I'm a tenured faculty. It doesn't matter if I have a handful of students or a ton of students in my classes. I tell you that because it's true. I, I have, again, the associate's degree from the community college, but I have a bachelor's in history from Springfield College, a master's from Worcester State, and a doctorate from um, uh, Western New England University, all of which I've done just as well at those institutions as I did at um, the community college. Community college gave me an excellent foundation. It's an excellent value and it is college credits and it's just as worthy as any other institution to go to. In fact, we know statistically that students that graduate from community college that go into four-year institutions are more likely to graduate from those four-year institutions than those students that started there as, as a, a, freshman, a freshman. And so this is a great value. I hope you take advantage of it. Get as much out of it as you can. And if you fail to understand something in the course materials or an assignment or a, a reference to an article, don't ever be afraid to reach out and ask me some questions. We can talk on the phone. We can even meet at the Mount. Um, there are office hours, but I'm also very flexible in doing different kinds of things. Um, I am a bit busy because I still practice a lot. That's, I, I usually don't dress up to do videos. Uh, you'll see some of my other videos. I might look a little different because I'll be in sweats or something like that talking about a topic area. But I still practice law. I have a criminal defense practice. I've been practicing law for um, 32 or 33 years now. And I find, you know, I know you're very successful because you went to law school and you passed the bar exam. I actually think the, the core of my success is because of the experience at the community college. It taught me how to learn. It taught me how to go out and have the courage to find information and answers to, to issues and or, or just ignorance that I had on any kind of topic. So when I left Springfield Technical College, true story, I just tell it real quick. I know I can talk forever. Those of you that know me in person, I tend to take classes long. Um, one of my closest friends I met at community college, and he went on to Columbia and got a master's degree in, uh, I don't know if it was literature or English. He ended up becoming the head at one time of the New York City school systems um, English language um, offerings. Um, but he gave me as a gift when I graduated from a Springfield Technical Community College, a book by Arthur Schlesinger Jr. He's um, the uh, official biographer of John F. Kennedy uh, during his administration, but he's a historian. And he wrote a book called Cycles in American History. My buddy gave it to me as a graduation gift. And he wrote inside, and I gotta find it, but I've moved so many times over the past 20 years. I got books and boxes all over the place. But I remember him writing in the uh, the sleeve of the book. This is for when you return um, to the community college to come in, to come and teach. It beca because it did become a passion to me. I love what the community college offers. It doesn't matter where you were, it doesn't matter where you're from, where at. It's a matter where you're going. And the community college can help you get there. There's no question about it. It's a place for those of you that have maybe been faltering a little bit during your high school experience educationally, or maybe you failed like me and quit school at one time or didn't do well in a previous iteration attempting college. Maybe you just never went to college and you're doing so later in life. You're in the right place. Community college is a great experience to, uh, 
to bolster um, your success moving forward. There's no question about it. I, I, I say that as kind of a, a corny, like he's must have drank the Kool-Aid. I have. And I, uh, it's delicious. Uh, community college in Excellent Valley. In fact, my son graduated from the Mount maybe four or five years ago, and uh, he never took any classes with me. He never told any of this. Fact. I'm sure some faculty figured out from the last name. He would, they were my student, but we never talked about it or anything like that. And he, he got a lot out of it. And I don't think he would have went to any college at all if it wasn't for the, the, the supportive environment and the, the welcoming environment the Mount has. And that's what I want you to feel. You're safe academically, you're safe physically, and you're safe emotionally to learn and grow. And I want to help you in that journey. Uh, if there's any questions, any concerns that you have, uh, don't ever be afraid to, to reach out. Um, don't let fear basically get the best of you or the anxiety. Uh, reach out with questions or concerns, and we'll try to get through the different um, stages of the semester. Can't think about what more I want to add in this little introductory video, other than I do want you to post uh, an email to me at some point pretty early on in the first few days saying, hey, I'm enrolled in such and such, I'm signed on because I have to do something with the mount called the stop out saying this student never showed up. And sometimes my assignments are a little ways because I want you to get the textbook and read the material and prepare the first assignment. And so I might need that information earlier that you're there and you plan on participating and enrolled. Other than that, I can't think of what most, uh, what, what I, my hobbies are in my career. I, I love political science, so I collect political buttons and political memorabilia from the 1960s and earlier. Otherwise, I was a boring guy that loves um, history, political science, and law. And my dogs and kids and all that good stuff. Um, other than that, I hope you have a successful semester. Some of you I'll see in both realms. I know some of you take some online class with me, but I also do the traditional brick and mortar. Those of you who take only the online class, we might have a chance to meet if you're up for it. There's no obligation to do it. We sometimes do a, a, a field trip over to the Gardner District Court or beyond. Sometimes we go to Worcester District Court where I practice most of the time, or we take a trip and you're welcome to come. Um, to the John Adams Courthouse where the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts sits for both the history, political science, it's all tied in, but especially the law students that are uh, into that stuff. Otherwise, 22 minutes, I was hoping to do it in five, uh, but those of you that got to know me know I can, I, can, uh, I can talk forever. But be well, have a great semester. You have all my information on the syllabus and um, hopefully we'll uh, talk soon and don't ever be afraid to reach out and I'm not kidding about it. Take care, folks.